Hey guys, today we're going to be completing our parallax animation with Alpine JS, uh, the one that we previously created. I'm just going to go ahead and refresh. As you can see, this we have this effect. This is purely with CSS, and you have these things coming in. So first of all, there are a few things that obviously I've made mistakes which I need to change. This isn't centered, so we should center it. And then as you can see, the background is being repeated here, so we want to go ahead and fix that. So in order to do those things at the very least, the CSS part, I'm just going to go ahead. This is our index.html file. I can actually just go ahead and call it index2.html. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to differentiate both these files just so you can go ahead and access them, um, the difference. So now here is our file. And as you can see, this doesn't look good. So now I basically have to center the mountain. So I'm going to go to my mountain. As you can see, this is the image. I'm just going to say, quite simply width minus full if i just say width minus full this should be centered though i want this is actually centered but i actually want this uh, telescope to be centered as well so i'm actually going to give a negative margin to the actual image so i'm going to say ml minus 24 or something i don't know maybe that works maybe we need to have a bit more ml minus 32 i think this looks fine now it's probably centered or close to being centered. One other thing we need to do here is we obviously need to fix this background. So let's just go ahead and quickly fix it. I'm going to go to my styles. Here we have the stars background. I'm just going to say background <clears throat> minus size. And then let's just call it cover. So if we do a cover, this should obviously work. And as you can see, this works, but obviously it's being, let's just try contain instead contain looks better so let's just have contain so now that we have that done there are a few things that we need to do here as well the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and link this scroll down to the act like after you click it this should just take you down this can be done with css and html uh, i'm not sure why i didn't do that previously but let's just go ahead and do it we also need to go ahead and animate this css and uh this sorry this scroll down button so i can do that just by saying this and as you can see this is now animating I can now go ahead and add an anchor tag to it and say that this is going to take to the section that has an ID of bottom screen. And obviously you can give it any ID that you want. I'm going to give the same ID here. And now if I click on scroll down here, this should actually just take us down. So those are the front CSS things that we need to do. Uh, obviously we need to also uh, make the scroll smooth. So I'm just going to say scroll behavior smooth. And this should make the scroll smooth. If I scroll down, obviously it didn't do it there. So now there's a refresh and now it should be smooth. Now, a few things that we need to do is we need to trigger this animation only and only if we scroll down. Currently, it's being triggered just automatically because uh, after a few seconds and after a delay, we don't need to do that. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to first of all, obviously go ahead and decrease the uh, delay here. I'm going to say this bottom section text is going to come after zero seconds. And then we have this, these other types of animations, these boxes. I'm going to say this is going to come after one second. This is going to come after 1.5 and then two, and then let's say 2.5. If we just play it out uh, after this refreshes, as you can see, if we scroll down, it actually just comes as soon as you load the page. This animation starts at zero, this one, 1 1.5, two, and then 2.5. Now what we need to do in order for us to go ahead and only play this animation after uh, you are actually scrolled down. There are a bunch of things we can do. The first thing that we can do, obviously, we can apply a class dynamically to it once we actually reach it here. Otherwise, what, what other things that we can do, let me just go ahead and mute my notifications. Okay, what other things we can do is we can go ahead and obviously uh, we can apply a class. We can also hide the box and then display it after it actually uh, we have detected the scroll on that section but the first thing that we need to do is we need to add that detection so i'm just going to copy my alpine uh, script tags and here i have the alpine core library and i have the intersect library as well intersect is the library you can i'm going to also link a video in probably the description you can check out how intersect works. intersect basically allows you to determine if you reached a particular section on the page and how much you've reached it so now that we have that done, let's just go ahead and initialize our uh, <clears throat> Alpine. And I'm going to say bottom section. So this, or maybe discover section. 
or maybe let's just call it discover. So discover is false and we're gonna enable it. I'm gonna, just gonna be a bit more descriptive on discover. So the bottom section is, that we have here is the discover sections. I'm gonna say by, by default, you're not gonna be on the discover section. So you should be on the discover section when and only when you reach this bottom section or bottom screen or whatever, right? So I'm gonna say X minus intersect, intersect, and dot half so i'm going to see when you actually have half of that section in your view then you should go ahead and change the discover to true so i'm going to say discover and then say true once the discover is true obviously we can see that i'm just going to go ahead and let's just i actually have a bug in my house <laughs> never mind that <laughs> okay so basically what i'm going to say is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to give a, I'm going to wrap a div around both of these elements. I'm going to just wrap a div like this. I'm going to say class. No, sorry, not class. I'm going to say x minus show that this should only show when the discover is true. This, oh, sorry, on discover. On discover is true. And we also need to go ahead and change this on discover here. So now if we go from the top, let me just refresh the page. So as you can see, we have this animation. We're going to wait a bit. We're going to scroll down. And as you can see, I don't see any, any animation because it only comes when you actually scroll half of this bottom section. So I'm going to scroll half now. And as you can see, we have the discover our experiences. And when we have these four things coming in, only and only if when I actually have this scrolled half, I'm going to refresh again. And as you can see, we have on this only coming in when you actually scroll down. So this is great. The scroll down is great. Everything looks great. Now, in order to actually make this more fascinating, we can actually go ahead and do a bunch of parallax animations. And in order for the parallax animations, so in order to make this more interesting, we have to do, we can also actually go ahead and do a bunch of parallax animations. In order to do the parallax animations, what we can do is we can just go ahead and first of all say, detect our scroll position. So I'm going to say scroll position is obviously going to be for starters zero, or we can just detect what the scroll position is, right? We can just say <clears throat> window dot uh, page y offset. That's going to detect the offset of your page. Uh, like imagine you're actually scrolled 200 pixels down. It's going to detect, okay, the page is 200 pixels down. That's what it's going to do. Uh, but this is not actually going to be updated. In order to update it, we have to call a method called scroll.window. And this is basically always going to trigger when you start scrolling. And we basically have to see that the scroll position, and we can just basically call this whole thing here. We can say that this is just going to be updated every time the user scrolls. So the scroll position is going to be updated to the window page y offset. And if you want to see it, I can just show it here. I can call div and then x minus text and let's say scroll position and you should be able to see the scroll position as you can see we don't have any scroll position here because i've made up some <laughs> mistake i guess so we have the scroll position we have the window page y offset let's just go ahead and actually see what we've done wrong so we have the scroll position window page y offset scroll position scroll position and then we have a scroll position here. let's just see if this is even rendering to begin with so we have the scroll position rendering um, but we don't have anything in there if i type one two three we don't even have the one two three rendering so that particularly is weird maybe we've made a typo sorry we've actually made a typo here so the offset actually obviously it's camel case so the offset need to be needs to be capital so now we have, as you can see, if I'm scrolling, the scroll position is changing. So now in order to achieve a, a cool parallax effect, what we can do is we can say that if we scroll, this thing should also scroll with us slightly, not like completely, because if we want it to scroll, it to scroll completely, we can just apply a position fix, but we want it to scroll slightly. In order to do so, we can obviously go ahead and change, apply some transition or translate properties to it. In order to do so, we can actually go ahead and first of all, what we can do is we can, let's just say, give a div on outside of it. Let's just see if that renders fine. So that renders fine. I wanna apply the div 
on a separate container because this already has a bunch of translate properties coming from animate uh, CSS, the animate animation uh, property that we've used. So I'm just going to apply it to a separate thing. So what we have to do is we can just go ahead and say that I want to change the style and the style should be transform. We obviously want to change the transform property and we want to change, let me just go ahead and give these, we want to change the translate Y property and we want to make it take the scroll position and let's just go ahead and give it that. Take the scroll position and it should be in pixels obviously and that's just it. Let's just see if this works. So we have this and if you're scrolling down as you can see this is scrolling down it's very rigid right so we don't want it to be that rigid so we can just say transition is going to be ease probably linear just so it's smooth so now if we do that as you can see it's much more smoother obviously my computer has started lagging because i don't know why um, we have a little heat here so it's lagging but actually this should smooth your animation but one thing that we don't need to do is we don't need to make it scroll completely like our scroll position so we can just go ahead and give it like a divider of force because we want it to scroll slightly slower than what we have so now if we scroll down as you can see it's following us but it's not really as hard as it should be. So that looks fine. And let me just pause this video and I'm gonna come back. I don't know why my computer is lagging so much. Okay, so I'm gonna re resume the video now. And as you can see, if I scroll down, it's much more smoother. The text is coming with us and this looks great. Now, a few things I'd like to do. I don't, like on a wider screen, I don't really see the mountains. So let me just go ahead and say that the mountains should actually be uh, the, the background should actually be bottom center. If we do that, then as you can see, we see a lot of mountains and I think this looks good. Now, in order to make this parallax animation even more interesting, what we can do is we can have the background scroll behind this uh, mountain as well. In order to do so, let's just go ahead and actually add a bunch of background CSS to it. So as we know, like we have the background on this intro section, as you can see it, and then we have the background position properties here. I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna say style, I'm gonna give this, and then give these, just so I can obviously uh, go ahead and add a bunch of things in there. So here we have our CSS. I'm gonna add my uh, scroll position property. So scroll position divided by four maybe, since we've done divided by four here as well. And let's say a minus. So now if we have a look at it, here we have our background, the header coming in. Now if we start scrolling, nothing really is happening. And the reason probably for that is we forgot to add pixels here. So I'm just gonna add the pixel here. So now if we start scrolling, as you can see, the mountains are actually scrolling with us. And if we want the effect to be more pronounced, we can obviously go ahead and decrease this to three. So now if we scroll down, we have the text scrolling as well and then we have the mountain scrolling as well let's just make it even more uh, prominent so now if as you can see we have it scrolling the text is scrolling slightly since the mountains are in the back they're scrolling scrolling a bit faster and again here you have your parallax animation obviously we can do a lot of fancy things i'm not going to again uh, limit you on what you can do here uh, you can also go out check a bunch of parallax examples on Dribbble or Behance just to get some idea, but I've basically taught you how to actually use uh, Alpine to actually achieve the effects, the parallax effects that you need. So that's gonna be pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.